How's it going everyone? I want to talk today about a throwing program overview. I want to touch on a few main points. Full body warm up, pre-throwing arm care, throwing progression, and post throw recovery. These are the four, more, four main points that need to be covered every single day. Um, whether it's a bullpen day, whether it's a long toss day, no matter what it is, these four aspects are going to be included in some way. The first part is the full body warm up. As you see, we're going to start off with foam rolling, rolling out, really just starting to loosen things up, and it's going to gradually go from low intensity, doing more mobility-based exercises, to more dynamic towards the end where we're doing side shuffles and karaoke. The next part is the pre-throwing arm care. This is the type of stuff that I'll have guys do before they throw every single day. Um, the first one is an arm circle routine. We're just starting to get the shoulders moving in a dynamic manner, um, doing just your simple um, arm circles forward and backwards, doing arm swings, um, and a couple different variations of arm circles. The next part is the Jager band routine. For this, I use a lot of drive lines exercises with reverse flies, forward flies, um, internal, external rotation, uh, tricep extensions, bicep curls uh, with pronation, uh, really just warming up the shoulders, the triceps, the biceps, um, and just really starting to get the arm moving uh, once again in a more dynamic manner with a little bit of resistance with the bands. The next part is the wrist weight series. We're going to do pronation swings, Cuban press, overhead throws, and pivot picks. This is all once again warming up our shoulder in a dynamic manner as well as warming up the elbow and the forearms. After that is the shoulder tube routine. Now we're starting to do more dynamic based stability exercises with the shoulder, um, doing dif different ranges of motion, um, going more out to the side with the arm, out in front, and also doing the throwing motion forward and back. After that, I like to have guys do a plyo uh, drop catch routine. This is a little bit different from your typical um, upward tosses. This is more um, of an explosive exercise. For example, um, you'd, have, you'd be holding a two pound ball. Uh, straight out in front of you, you drop it um, about six inches, grab it and pull it right back up to the start as fast as you can, working on just quickly turning on and off the shoulder. The next thing I like to do is rebounders. Um, a lot of guys have um, their pitchers do this post-throwing. I like to have it done pre-throwing and post-throwing. Um, and what we're doing here is just working on the force acceptance of the shoulder um, and the whole arm. Um, I just like the way... Uh, I, wait, I like the way this feels um, personally when I do it and as well as um, our players. I like um, getting that force acceptance pattern uh, down uh, for pre-throwing as well for 10 to 15 reps. Uh, more stuff on pre-throwing routine. Um, pliable exercises are done every single day um, with guys that I work with. Um, the reverse throws and the pivot picks um, to me are the two staples that I have everybody do. Um, and just because I think they both have benefits um, no matter what the person is. Reverse throws is going to be great for working um, on the posterior shoulder, um, strengthening that, as well as um, what most people don't realize is reverse throws are great for thoracic spine work. If you're doing it properly, you're keeping that front knee in a stable position and you're resisting rotating your lower half when you do a reverse throw. So we're also working on the thoracic spine when we're doing that. And then pivot picks are great for, um, great for arm patterning as well as working um, on the glove side um, and I just think uh, that's one it's one of those drills that's great for um, continually focusing um, on an efficient arm path and really just starting to warm up the arm before you go throw a baseball the rest of the exercises roll-ins rockers walking wind up step back drill turn and burn um, and a couple others that I don't have on here um, are great for for just individualizing the program for your guys um, if you got somebody that maybe they struggle with separation you're gonna start to implement roll-ins because that's purely focusing on the hip shoulder separation if you have someone that struggles with lead leg block the rocker drill might be a great one. Um, and for guys that struggle with getting their tempo built up, they might get stuck a little bit on their backside. The walking windups are a great one. Um, so depending on you know what your player needs is going to determine what type of drills you do with them. Um, but like I said earlier, the reverse throws and the pivot picks are going to benefit uh, most throwers, and I like to incorporate that uh, before they throw. The next part is the throwing progression. I like to have guys do a few drills um, before they actually do just their normal throwing progression. And this kind of goes back to the, the last point I made about the plyo balls. It's going to be different for everybody. It's going to determine uh, be determined by what they need to focus on. Uh, but an example would be doing torso drill. Um, this is where you're just facing your target um, square. And all we're focusing on is just rotating the upper half and throwing it. Um, this is good for working on um, torso rotation velocity um, and, and really just focusing on that aspect of the delivery. Next one is a rocker drill, um, just like done in the, the plyo section. Step back drill, 
um, is a great one for a lot of guys uh, for feeling the connection on their backside and really engaging the glute as they're going um, through their delivery. And then from there, um, so those first three drills, I'll have them do that out to about 60 feet. And then once they get to 60 feet, I like to do just an easy leg lift, okay? So we're not coming to complete set position. This is more of just more of a relaxed, getting the body moving with a leg lift like we do when we pitch. Do this to about 90 feet. Once you get to 90 feet, now we're going to start to incorporate a shuffle. And from there, we're going to do the shuffle throws all the way out to max distance. If it's a long toss day, the extension phase of long toss. Um, and through this drill, you're really getting air under the ball, um, really getting your feet moving and being as athletic as you can. And depending on the day, if it's a pull-down day, um, once you reach your peak distance, you're going to start to pull down on the way in on a line. And this is where you're really um, getting your body moving um, at a good pace and throwing it on a line as hard as you can. Once you get to about 60 feet, I like to have guys do flat ground, and you know I know flat grounds um, are a hot topic uh, for some people. Some people don't think that flat grounds have any benefit, and you know, or that they're they're just as similar stress wise um, as it is to throw off the mound. But realistically, in a team setting, you can't have your guy every pitcher hop on a mound um, to replace their flat ground. It's just not realistic in a team setting, and I still think that that flat grounds have their place. Um, as far as just working on, um, more, more so just working on getting spin of their breaking ball, or maybe it's working on a new grip, um, or just feeling out a changeup. I think it has its benefits for experimenting and working on different grips um, and just spinning the baseball. Um, so I still like to have guys do that at the end of their throwing progression, um, just to continually get in the mindset of being a pitcher. Um, you know, obviously, there's a lot of aspects in the pitching, increasing velocity, and you know, a lot of the stuff that I'll program. Um, is focused on that velocity development and uh, becoming a good thrower before we become a good pitcher. But ultimately, when we are, when, if we are a pitcher, we need to be able to do things that pitchers do, and that's being comfortable throwing out of the stretch, throwing with runners on base. So doing this flat ground setting is also great for working on those things, working on doing pickoffs, working on being a 1-1 to the plate because um, you got a fast guy on first base. So Things like that, um, I really like to take into account on the flat grounds. Um, so you're working on a lot of different things that you can do on a daily basis. The last part is post-throw recovery routine. Um, I think every thrower needs to have a routine after they throw, and uh, it's going to depend on what they had that day. If they had a really high-intense day, um, it was a bullpen day, or maybe it was a, a game and they threw four or five innings, their volume of the post-throw um, recovery routine isn't going to be as elaborate as it would on, say, a recovery throwing day. And, and the reason for that is, is just the, the body's already been under a lot of stress and a lot of workload. We really don't need to, to really pound on the body more and add a lot of volume. Um, so on those days, it's going to be lighter, maybe just do a little bit of band work, rebounders, upward tosses, and that's about it. Um, and then if it's on a recovery throwing day uh, where they didn't have much vol throwing volume that day, we might do more stuff like pull aparts, um, you know, PNFs, no money, more elaborate, maybe more sets of the band series, as well as the upward tosses, rebounders, doing waiter walks to work on shoulder stability, shoulder tube series to do um, shoulder stability work in a dynamic manner. Um, and I also like to do um, forearm uh, variations with band, just light band work, um, doing um, forearm work um, in different variations, pronation, supination, extension. Um, uh, flexion, just just different different variations to really just promote blood flow to the forearm. So that just gives you a general overview of a throwing uh, progression that I like to utilize with my guys. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on social media. Uh, my my handle for uh, Twitter and Instagram is gsp underscore training, or you can send me an email um, at info at gainerstrength pitching dot com.